We'll start with your festival, Bearded Theory. Now, I've heard about Bearded Theory. I've, I've um, seen a couple of lineups over the years, but I don't know mm-hmm. much about the festival itself. So come on, let's let's talk about the general theme of the festival and what this year's brought. Yeah, absolutely. I So it's my first Bearded Theory. I'd never done it before. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, it's in a sort of country house estate in Derbyshire, right in the middle of the arse end of nowhere, um, which is, I think, kind of what you want for a festival. Yeah. Um, this, that's what I like about Why Not is that no one gets any phone signal. So you just, <laughs> you are like, you're there and you've got a kind of, you've got no choice but to engage. Um, but yeah, so there was uh, a big stage, like a really massive main stage. You had a quite big, sort of big top second stage and then lots of other sort of little stages dotted about the place, some of which were in sort of smaller tents, some of which were just kind of open air stuff. There was a big sort of wooden, you know, the sort of tree people in Lord of the Rings. That was, it kind of looked a bit like them. Yeah, that was that sort of What was the best in Lord of the Rings top trumps was tree beard? Like, I mean, do you know, I've not that's seen really, Lord of the Rings. really cool memory, that. <laughs> yeah, that's really cool. People <laughs> like to hear that sort of stuff. <laughs> um, but there was something like that, which always had like, massive edm and kind of dance music pumping out of it and like big like fire and pyro and stuff um and there was a dancey element to it was there was yeah that... there was a big dance element to it because you know I, I saw the lineup and the lineup is what really attracted me to the festival um mm. but i didn't realize how much of a contrast to it there was there's a lot of like you know punk and old school punk and new punk and um kind of middle-aged punk um but, but there's All also the yeah, a lot of punk about, which, you know, good shit. But um, mm. also a fair whack of dance music, which, you know, when you're stumbling out of a bar and you're sort of, when you, you know, I, I don't know about you, Sean, I kind <laughs> of inhabit a, a different person when I'm at a festival. You sort of lo- <laughs> lose the, the shackles of reality a little bit. And you're yes. like, yeah, it's 2.30 a.m. I've had 12 beers. Fuck it. Let's go into it's the dance festival. Escapism. And it's the perfect exactly. place for escapism. You can do whatever yeah, you want. Yeah, entirely. Yeah. Um, mm. And yeah, I do you know I had a really brilliant time. It was muddy. It was really muddy. Uh, it rained like Tuesday, Wednesday. So by the time everyone was arriving on Wednesday and Thursday, the ground was like paste. You know, it disintegrated up before I had even arrived. Um, but we got there. We got the tent up. Uh, my mate had brought a tent that was like huge. So we needed the help of some kind strangers to <laughs> to put it up. Um, and then. We, you know, I, I attacked it with gusto. I, I brought considerable <laughs> amounts of value lager, um, and <laughs> and a lot of Lidl's own vodka, um, and you know, there there was there was a bit of a bit of jet, a couple of jazz cigarettes knocking about. You know, I'll, I'll cut loose at a festival. I don't mind. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, if my mum listens to this, that's not true. Um, <laughs> And yeah, like I said, we I kind of had had, it's been, you know, like, look at the state of everything. The world is kind of shit. It's a bit tough. And I thought, fuck it, let's just go mad, mm. basically. And th- that I did. And I saw absolutely tons of, of brilliant bands whilst doing so. Go on. Who was the best then? Who was the uh, best band? The top band? set for me, like the best of everyone was Lambrini Girls, who okay. I think are just like the most phenomenal punk band in the world um and that was like they are british they're from brighton it's very like queer focused and feminist punk and it's it's you know like riot girl stuff but um with a british edge to it um and it was yeah it's great and the pits were insane there was like full-on circle pits going round and round and round and um phoebe lunny the guitarist and vocalist she's sort of like She's like a conductor of it all. She like jumps into the crowd and is getting people to smash into each other. And she's like, I put, I've, I've done a write up for a, for a different site, mm. uh, which you can find on my Twitter. But in that, I was saying she's got this like amazing knack of sort of inciting chaos. But she manages to she just like slip away. She just sort of disappears whilst the, everything kind of goes on around her. I think that's pretty cool. She was like yeah. ha- halfway up one of those big. Um, tent poles that you're not supposed to climb under any circumstances by the end oh, yeah. um after getting like pushed up like legs up from people <laughs> um i thought english teacher were good english teacher are always good mm-hmm. um 
Panic Shack were a band who I was really, really impressed with. I've seen them quite a lot before. You know, they're always a, a good kind of lively little punk outfit. But, um, excuse me, uh, but they, I think they had kind of been away for a little bit, a few months, and whatever they have done over that time has just worked wonders. They are like a, a oiled machine now. Mm. They feel like, as opposed to, you know, I know they were, they were kind of this up and coming sort of punk band, which in a, in and of itself means it's maybe a little bit ramshackle and a little bit sort of pub punk and that. And, you know, mm. that definitely has its charm and, and they are a really strong unit. You can tell they're talented and they're really good, but whatever they've done, they sound mm. like Amal and the Sniffers. You know, they sound like they have been either produced, maybe they've been signed, maybe there's a, a different, whatever it is, something has changed in that band and that is massively changed for the better because they are like a force to be reckoned with now. Um, mm. which is really exciting. Uh, let me Amal see and the Sniffers else. were also there, weren't they? Was Amal and the Sniffers were also there. They good. were very good. Yeah, mm. they're just like classic. They're, they're The reason that I cut my hair into a mullet is Amal and the Sniffers. So, you know, I was <laughs> well, always going to enjoy uh, They're going on tour later this year, aren't they? They're oh, yeah. Austin. And then Absolutely. The song I well, will do so. anything to be there. <laughs> um. <Yeah>. Was there <laughs> any bands you'd not heard of? That uh, do you know, generally, there was... Everyone that I saw, I knew um, because there was like, it was like 30 bands that we saw over the weekend. There, there was so many bands that I wanted to see. I didn't really have any time to investigate anyone new. Mm. Um, but yeah, the you know, the Big Moon were there. Great band. Bob Villain yeah. was like immense. They were... No, you got to see Bob Villain. You got to, yeah. I got to see Bob Villain. They pulled out of Slam Dunk. Yes, they did. For... We'll come to that later. But... Yeah, we'll, we'll touch on that later. Um, <laughs> and... They were on at like 6 p.m. It was like, you know, early evening. And they were, it was like a headliner set. It was it was mm. Future Islands who were on that evening, who I thought were yeah. a bit shit. It was like... I really, I've never heard of, good things about them live. That It was split opinions. Sort of the older crowd were into it. The younger crowd, I don't think, was so much into it. But Bob Villain were like, just unlike it. And, then, you know, I've seen them before and they're a really good live outfit. But holy shit, that was like insanity. They yeah. was the loudest thing of the festival. You know, mm. they kind of sound checked a little bit meekly, and I was like, "Oh, okay, what's going on here?" And then someone on the desk has just gone like, "Turn, turn the volume right up," um, which was just oh. beautiful. Yeah, I'm really was, glad to hear great. that. I feel like this is you getting back at me for the Manchester. <laughs> oh well, yeah, quite. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, bedroom were great. The Menstrual Cramps, another kind of punk band like um, like Amal or Lamborghini Girls or, yeah. or Panic Shack, who were, were really, really good. Uh, who else did I see? Big Special, who I've been talking about quite a bit. I've interviewed them. Amazing. Dry Cleaning, Baxter Jury. It was just like an endless list of the, some of the best bands that, that you've ever seen. Yeah. Um, well, the Silent Disco was pretty about, good. Sorry. Yeah. I was going to say, we've spoken previously about the neighbouring festival, Why Not, and kind of the, their faults. So mm. how was the festival in terms of... Um, terms Organisationally of and stuff. Um, I thought it was quite good. The press area didn't have any power or wi-fi or water until sort of the middle of friday was that Um, the weather was i'm not sure i'm not sure if that was weather or organizational or but then i kind of feel like a bit of a diva you know it was thursday it's like (laughs) so what um (laughs) oh it's soft play on thursday that was sensational i'm a big big soft play fan and sprints were on before them as well um Mm. the yeah so sprints and soft play were supposed to clash but because of the, the weather they kind of shifted the lineup and closed one of the stages or they, you know, kept it closed for a day, which meant I got to see both sprints and soft play. So, you know, win-win. Played divorce pulled hands, out. Good... Unfortunately. Divorce pulled out. Why? Divorce pulled out. Um, one of them cut their finger working in the kitchen. Um, that's what they said. And therefore could not play, which was upsetting because I absolutely loved Divorce. The, was it the Poles, Poles drummer who played with his arm and his cast or everything, everything, one of them? Yeah, I think that's right. And then at Glastonbury, one of them cut their fingers and they had, uh, it was like a white fender that was just like sp- sprayed with blood. It just looks pretty cool. Mm. Um, but yeah, no, generally, organisationally, I thought it was pretty good. You know, there was not a lot to, to complain about. Um, if it wasn't so muddy, I think it would have been like the perfect weekend. And even mm. then, I think eventually the mud sort of just becomes a part of it you know it's it's kind of a character in the production and you get mm. to you know you get to a point where you're just like it's kind of funny when you mm. see people stacking it in the pit and you see people losing wellies and stuff and you're like well 
it's that's the same as people like bright red with sunburn i suppose just in the <laughs> in the other in the other direction yeah that well, sounds sounds good so you'd uh you'd recommend the festival and be oh y- yeah 100 percent. i thought it had the best lineup of any of the uk festivals that i had seen generally organizationally can't really follow it um the sound everywhere was good the nightlife was strong you know the silent disco was really fun and it was free as well which i think is like a really big tick in the box because i don't really want to pay a 10 pound deposit mm. for You're some talking silent headphones. disco not the festival <laughs> yeah so yeah the, the silent disco was was free the festival wasn't free um and that was good you know and that went on to like three in the morning um and then what else was there there was this mad little place it was called the something teapot i never i didn't go there sober so i don't remember what it was called and <laughs> it was it was kind of where everyone who had like the, at the end of the night when it was mm. the sun was coming up and people were in a state of uh it, I don't how do you word it but people were having a good <laughs> having a really good time um, yeah. yeah and it was just like there's like a piano in the corner and people would bring guitars and violins and stuff and just do like these big sing-along kind of couple of hours of like the Beatles tunes or there's like a bit of Radiohead David Bowie and stuff like that and you're just like yeah this is it's like like you said, it's that element of freedom. It's, it's soul food. It's very Glasto, Glasto, it is, it is a bit Glastonbury, and it's just everything that you want, I think, from a festival to, mm. as I said in the intro, be stumbling back to your tent after singing Beatles songs with a load of strangers at six <laughs> in the morning, and then you sort of just flop face first into your sleeping bag, still fully clothed, you know? <laughs> Perfect. Perfect way <laughs> yeah. to, uh, to round up. So, I thought uh, so. Go on, tell me about Slam Dunk then. Right. Well, I didn't really know I was going to Slam Dunk until about a week before. I'd, I'd, I'd done the, I knew I could have got a press pass, so I knew it was a, it was a potential. Yeah. Um, but I kind of had planned to go to live at Leeds. Yes. The day before, and then United got to the FA Cup final, so I couldn't do that. Right. So I thought I'm going to go to Slam Dunk. I'm, I'm kind of craving festival season now, and mm-hmm. there's still quite a few bands who I've listened to in my youth. So I thought I'll go along, and Bob Villain with the biggest pull. <laughs> <laughs> should, we, should we get straight on to to Bob Villain because they they cancelled on the day? Um, yeah, well, I have I kind of missed it as it was happening because I was, mm. you know, in a field. But from what I heard, they got kicked out because there was a, a physical altercation. So the rumor is that they had a fight backstage with Pale Waves production staff, um, right? And there's a rumor that they were holding cricket bats, but I think that's part of the set, isn't it? Or did they? Uh, did they, they do that? There is a baseball bat that appears yeah. at various points, yeah. But then I, I had heard that they'd smashed a gaff up with the with a baseball bat as well. Yeah, I think it was a bit of Chinese whispers because they mm. came out and said, "Don't be so ridiculous." That it's quite a, like a bit no, a not so cryptic tweet saying, "Yeah." But then again, there must be there's no smoke without fire. Something's happened for them to be to be taken off the bill. But, yeah, exactly. And mm. you know, I feel like. The way that I understand Bob Villain is that they are a very politically active band. You know, yeah. you just listen to him, you see him, and you can tell. And I feel like, but they are also, from what I understand, very sound guys. You know, I some some people that I was with at the festival this weekend interviewed them, spoke to them, shot them, and had have had nothing but praise for Bob Villain. They seem like very sound people. So mm-hmm. I feel like something must have happened, or been said, or been done, or alluded to. That you know to provoke a response like that in in someone, I think you know I you know I don't want to speculate. This is all hearsay. 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 What's the word? Yeah, they they were not slam dunk. That's not their. Uh, yeah. their <laughs> yeah. Um. But you know, you feel like it's got to be something significant that has happened yeah. to kind yeah. of cause something like that. Like you say, it is all speculation. But I think it was quite poor that we found out whilst watching the band before them. Um. Like that, they weren't playing, and we didn't find out from the stage either. We found out by someone just happening to be scrolling on the phone to see. To oh, see just a said it on like on Twitter or whatever. You, they, there was no announcement or anything. There might have been after, but we obviously just left at that point because oh, well, I think yeah. we were just waiting for Bob Villain. But I, I like their album so much this year, and it, it was just oh, it's amazing, isn't it? Couldn't believe it. Like there was about ten minutes where I was just like, oh, this this isn't happening. This <laughs> like there's a <laughs> who did you see forecast. Um, 
So I saw a band called Honey Revenge, who were the first people on. The, it was the they were American band, and it was the first ever festival. Cool. And they were they were fantastic. They they were a bit um kind of pale waves Paramore vibe. Oh right, yeah. So very pop emo-y, punky, pop they, punky. Yeah. No, well, that was kind of the whole vibe of the festival, to be fair. But um, they were brilliant. But the I saw Red Jumpsuit Apparatus. Have you ever ever been on them? The, no. Nope. The, it was kind of very much high school pop punk bands that all came for a payday uh, i see right and it they're was all now at like sixes. 40. it was yeah. <laughs> yeah and it was you me at sixes farewell but I just, the big thing that surprised me was i was expecting the crowd to be i don't know why but just a bit like that i wouldn't get along with them maybe that that very different music tastes for mm-hmm. the majority and maybe a bit of snobbery sometimes from different yeah. people who like different genres against others but like the bands were covering indie songs the the people in the crowd like there was, there was someone i was talking to who were going to royal otis and it was just, maybe i'd just been a bit um judgmental and tired people with this uh the brush but that there was kind of no crossover but mm. there definitely was and it was just a really nice vibe it was like the whole festival was good and i think the fact we avoided the bad weather just was but did you manage was, to get in and out without getting rained on well, we were going into pale waves just as the thunderstorm passed. Oh, under a tent. And it was only there for about half an hour. And oh, that's not too bad. Yeah, so it was just the ground that was really difficult. And I came back, and it's taken me two days to get to get home. Oh, <laughs> mate, I am absolutely exhausted. Like, I, I've been wearing wellies since, like, Thursday morning. Um, mm. We arrived at, like, 10, 11, mm. and then... Because of the state of the ground, they didn't take them off until I got ho- until I got back to my car on Sunday night. So my legs are like jelly. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> my my <laughs> um, legs feel like I've done a marathon. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it's difficult to mosh in wellies. Um, you know, <laughs> I don't you know. The about video you. I posted of, of slam dunk with the, uh, the no, I didn't caught someone just slipping, <laughs> like w- walking past the front and just slipping onto his back and it was oh. just like per- perfect timing for a video <laughs> so northern um, chorus has released its second tiktok video nice news. good stuff <laughs> like and subscribe um but there's Two followers <laughs> i don't think i follow them so mm. after this recording there'll be three um i need to work out how to uh how to grow a tiktok page yeah it's difficult not, isn't it there was so, something uh, i mean obviously we're, we're kind of talking shop on the podcast here but i had brought with me a little microphone to try and do some sort of vox pop stuff but mm. it, it didn't work because it was really cheap for Amazon, <laughs> so i didn't get to do any of that but i think yeah. stuff like that is kind of good uh content for tiktok um mm. what was i saying oh yeah um i say i don't know about you sean but i'm i'm really very much like getting involved you know i like being in the thick of it mm. and amongst it and it is difficult to do that with wellies on, but everyone else had wellies on, so it kind of just we yeah. kind of made it work, you know. Well, yeah. Well, the decathlon shop in Leeds opened at eleven, and there was just a surge of of people in there who were all <laughs> going to slam dunk just to get like wellies and raincoats. I had my Dunlop Sports Direct specials that I had bought this time last year before Why Not and Blue Dot, uh, which still have mud on them from Why Not and Blue Dot. <laughs> I, like, I hadn't worn them since last festival season and I nearly didn't bring them as well and my girlfriend was like are you going to bring your wellies and I was like oh, I don't think so and then she was like no you've got to bring those you like you have to so I was like oh fine fine I'll bring them mm. thank, thank yeah. Christ for that because I'd have been in big trouble otherwise yeah no it's definitely a wise move there was one of our friends that didn't have them and uh yeah his shoes are in a state and he could barely stand up by the end of uh Yubi at six who would yeah exactly headlines, but you know so circle pit and wellies not something i've done before but i have done now <laughs> yeah yeah look but it was just a jubilant atmosphere i think it was just festival season yeah because it's early in festival season as well yeah. so people people are all you know really excited to be there mm. you know no one's doing kind of two or three back to back whatever and yeah the atmosphere was just really fun you know and bearded theory had a little there was a little bar kind of behind the the main stage which because i was press i got to go to and it was cheap as well five or a pint mm. which i thought was Bargain. spectacular <laughs> you know you, you go to certain pubs in manchester and you'll put and you'll pay more than that um yeah yeah i went to the castle the other day and it was like 650 for a guinness which i thought was insane um but there you go it's in the northern yes. quarter well what did i expect <laughs> um and yeah three quid for a tequila shot which is like dangerously cheap 
uh, <laughs> so I was yeah I you know I went I I went pretty hard and like I said I'm, I'm paying the price still now it's yeah. Tuesday no it's Wednesday as we record um <laughs> so it's been it's been a pretty big one yeah, <laughs> yeah who was cool. your uh, who's your highlight of slam dunk um Bob Villa no I'm <laughs> I think probably, I think you me at six. Had really? I just, didn't have you down as a, as a sort of fan of a band like that. Well, no, I, I probably, I'm probably not. I've probably not listened to them in 10 years, but it was a bit of nostalgia. Um, and they kind of played all the, all the hits. Do they have and any hits? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I couldn't name you one you me at six, though. Fair enough, fair enough. Yeah, that, well, that's what I mean. It was, it was kind of. I felt like I was stepping out of my comfort zone a bit. Well, mm-hmm. maybe a lot compared to my yeah. usual things that I go to. Um, mm. the, all well, American I mean, rejects were on. They were, they were good. I have heard of them. Yeah. <laughs> you trying to think but, you who know, else was on? But boys like that's, girls. That's the thing with who? Sorry. Boys like girls. You'll the, well, they're the, the type of bands song. where you'll <laughs> type of bands where you'll know the songs, but maybe not necessarily the band but mm. like i said bob villain was the one i was looking forward to most and when that was cancelled i thought right i'm just gonna immerse myself into this and uh, just go try, ahead, try head first into it. As much yeah as that's can. the way to do it i think um and you know the, the thing with bearded theory is that it was very much it was so much my comfort zone that i could have curated a festival and it would have been very much almost entirely that lineup you know the core of it was like some of my favorite bands going at the moment Mm-hmm. Um, so like I said, I didn't have a lot of time to explore anything new. Um, mm. but it was just great. You know, it was, it was really good. The band's were really good. It was organized really well. The cheap backstage bar was just superb. Um, mm. and the best part about it is that they let you bring your cans into the arena. There's no yeah. like search or whatever. There's no, you know, there's no like gate. You just go straight from tent to mm-hmm. stage with mm. as many cans as you can physically fit on your person. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's always a big bonus. I think. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> and, you know, it's it's stuff like that. You know, take your cans into the arena. The headphones at the Silent Disco are free. It, it's just th- little things like that that you can tell it's kind of an effort to make people, to, to sort of put people first and make sure that your festival goer has a good time and is not just mm. a pound sign, you know. Yeah, no, definitely. Definitely. My well, ours wasn't a Sam Dunk's just a day festival. As well, day festival in Hatfield and Leeds, so we didn't really. Oh, have, I didn't realize it was worried. just a day thing. Yeah, yeah. So, but it was a an hour and a half nearly in the shuttle queue to get out. So oh, wow. there wasn't even a danger of going out afterwards. So I should have felt <laughs> fresh when I got, when I got. How was how was the organizational side of it? Because I didn't Slam Dunk last year. Wasn't that it was slated? Oh yeah. It? Well, apparently the. Well, considering the weather as well that, that was expected and things like that, I think it was it was good. I think they definitely learned the lesson. And the feedback, I think, from Hatfield the day before was that everything had been kind of perfectly mm. responded to. 